This is the Zephyrus G. This is probably one of the more anticipated laptops we've seen come out in 2019. The reason why people are interested in it is because of its price point. It's an $1,100 laptop. And for a gaming laptop, that's not cheap. I mean, there's cheaper devices out there, but this thing promised a lot. The teaser videos showcased this product that was really thin, really light, and had awesome performance. And because of that, I think I overhyped this product for myself. Not that it's a bad product, but I think I had unrealistic expectations of what this laptop could deliver. It's still a great device, but they had to take some shortcuts to get there. Um, the build quality, let's start there, is an area that they did not skimp on. This thing promises a thin and light gaming laptop, and it is, for the money, for $1,100, you're not getting gaming laptops thinner than this. In fact, most devices in this price range, in that like $1,000 price range, are a solid like 25, even 30% thicker. It is a thin and light package, and they've also made it in a way that's like easy on the eyes. There's no like super, ugly red lights and stuff like that. It's a very simple design. The logo on the front does light up when it's on. It's this orangey red color, but it's relatively dim and there's no other kind of colored RGBs on the rest of the system. Now the build quality is actually pretty good. It's got the kind of Zephyrus design where it's very difficult to keep this thing free of fingerprints. Like it's got this brushed metal finish, but the rest of the device is plastic. The inside deck, the bottom panel, everything is plastic all around, but it's a well-made device. Like there's nothing about this that makes me feel like it's poorly made. Okay, let's talk about the screen because this is probably it's, I mean, when you're playing games, it's probably one of the more important things on a gaming laptop. So this screen is a 120 hertz panel, but this is the upgraded model. There's a base model that has a 60 hertz panel, but if you're buying a gaming laptop in 2019 with this kind of performance, you probably want a screen of this caliber, 120 hertz or higher. Now, this panel was probably the biggest disappointment for me. It's a fast screen, it's 120 hertz, but the color accuracy is quite poor, surprisingly poor. So the past year or so for fast screens, we've seen really good color accuracy and color gamut. And so when you see a screen like this, it just looks a little bit more dull. Uh, it's also not super bright, not a dark screen by any means, but it's just not as bright as other competitors in its space. But overall, it's a fair screen. It's just compared to what we've seen on the market for the past year and a half, it doesn't really stand out. I can forgive it for the price, but I think that's part of the whole expectation thing, right? I just was thinking that for the money, you'd get a screen that was as good as other people in the space. It's also missing a webcam. Now for most gamers, they probably don't use their webcam very often on their laptops, but for that occasional time when you do need video for whatever reason, like if you're making a Skype call or something, you now have no way of doing that video feed unless you purchase an external webcam. Like it's not like they include one in the box or anything. It is a completely webcamless machine. It does still have some mics at the bottom of the screen, but yeah, no webcam. Okay, the performance on this device is something I think most people are interested in. It's running the Ryzen 3750H and a GTX 1660 Ti, Max-Q. So this is kind of where my expectations were also led astray. When they first announced this device, I thought it was running a regular 1660 Ti. It's actually running a lower wattage Max-Q version. It's faster than the GTX 1060 for laptops. It's also faster than a 1060 for desktops but it's slower than last year's 1070 Max-Q. Still a very powerful GPU, but you should know where it sits in terms of the overall ranking of laptop performance. Uh, it's combined with the four core chip and it's fast, but when it comes to multi-core applications, the Intel chips that have six cores are gonna do better. It's a good combination. The AMD CPU with the Nvidia GPU delivers some really good gaming performance, but to get there, they had to run some pretty aggressive fans. So the thermals are fine on this machine. It doesn't overheat or throttle, which is kind of impressive considering the thickness of this device. It is a lower wattage CPU. So compared to some of the Intel CPUs out there, it's a 35 watt CPU. So it's putting out a little bit less heat, but the main reason why they're able to achieve this is through their fans. Uh, they're loud fans. I did not break any tabs. <laughs> they are loud fans, but they cool the system properly. Now in the software, you'll also see a decibel reading, and I think that's very inaccurate. In fact, I think that's like misleading because a lot of people will look at that number if they own the device and think that that's the actual decibel reading. There's no way. That is like probably 10 decibels quieter than what it's actually reading, unless they're measuring that thing out from like 10 feet away. These are loud fans. Inside, you also get access to your Wi-Fi card. It's a pretty bad card. You probably wanna replace that if you get this device. And you also have access to a single slot of RAM. It's a two channel system. It's just that the second channel of RAM is soldered on. You can only replace this channel that's visible. And you also have access to two NVMe slots. So these are strangely 
PCIe 3x2. So you'll still get really fast drives, just not the fastest speed possible from your NVMEs. Uh, battery down here, 76 watt hour. It's actually a pretty good battery life on this system. It's a seven hour battery life. I didn't think, like Ryzen chips are not known for great battery life. They're usually a little more power hungry. So seven hours, pretty respectable. Uh, you also see the speakers down here, pretty good sounding, but they're really poorly positioned. Like if you take this device and you listen to it with the speakers facing up, it just sounds so much cleaner than it does when it's in its natural state. But that's what we have, down firing speakers that blast right into your table. I really wish manufacturers would stop doing that. Like, I don't know. Is there an audio engineer that watches my channel that explains, that can explain why laptop manufacturers insist on putting speakers that face downwards. It's really weird. Okay, uh, keyboard, trackpad, they're good. The keyboard has a clean layout. The keystrokes are a little bit shallow, kind of expected on a gaming laptop like this, but there's nothing I really have to complain about this keyboard, at least nothing that really sticks out. The arrow keys are small, but at least they're well positioned. Uh, plastic trackpad, honestly, nothing I really have to complain about the inputs on this device. Okay, ports, it has an ethernet port. Despite it being super thin, it has an ethernet jack, which is nice. The rest of the ports are kind of standard, but keep in mind that the USB-C port does not support Thunderbolt 3. It is an AMD system and it is a kind of cheaper product, so I wouldn't expect Thunderbolt 3 anyways. But I wanted to end this video with a kind of more important discussion of where this laptop fits in the bigger picture of things. When they first announced this, I was very excited about what this thing promised because for $1,100, I mean, that was the marketing price that they pushed out in the beginning it seemed like you were getting an amazing deal. And it's still a really good device, but I really feel like you get what you pay for. The $1,100 variant of this system has eight gigs of RAM and a 60 hertz screen, both of which are kind of underwhelming considering what 2019 has to offer. Even at that price point, the $1,200 version has a 120 hertz screen and 16 gigs of RAM. And that is a system that feels more complete just for a gaming laptop, it feels, like what you would expect, but at that point, you're now paying $1,200. And there are competitors in this space that can give this thing a pretty good run for its money. So a lot of people will compare this thing to the Helios 300, which is a popular, inexpensive gaming laptop. However, I don't feel like they're really that comparable. This is a much thinner and lighter device. It is a more compact and sleeker machine. Like they have similar paper specs, but if you're looking for portability, definitely look at the Zephyrus over the Helios 300. There is, however, another device, which I've reviewed before, that I would consider a strong competitor to this, and it's the Lenovo Y740. That has a machine that has much better specs and is usually quite expensive, but because Lenovo puts their stuff on sale so regularly and so aggressively, when you catch that thing on sale, and if the Zephyrus is not on sale, they are, like not that far apart in price. And I feel like if I had to choose between an $1,100 or $1,200 Zephyrus and a $1,300 or $1,400 Lenovo that's on sale, I'd probably go for that Lenovo unless I really wanted a long battery life because I feel like the Zephyrus does a better job at that. But the moment the Zephyrus goes on sale, I feel like it's a, it's a difficult decision to make because they're both offering such good value. And I'll be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Lenovo dropped the price of that Y740 because of this thing coming out. They probably want to take the wind out of its sail, out of the launch and just be like, you know, that's not that special. We got something cool as well. But that's basically it. I think this is a great device. Just temper your expectations because it is still an $1,100 device and I really think you're getting what you pay for. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.